November 12, 2021, 19-year-old Ashley Wadsworth went from Canada to the UK to her boyfriend, with whom she met on the internet. The girl was overjoyed that after many years of online communication, she would be able to see him. However, no one could have guessed that this happy meeting would turn into a tragedy. Ashley Wadsworth was born on July 25, 2002 in Vernon Township in British Columbia, Canada. She was the daughter of Kenneth Wadsworth and Christy Gendron and had an older sister named Haley. The Wadsworth family was large and close-knit, consisting of over 50 people, including cousins, uncles, and aunts of varying degrees of kinship. They all lived in the same community. Ashley was a cheerful, outgoing, and energetic girl, so she was popular and had many friends. She loved outdoor activities such as swimming, horseback riding, and skiing. Ashley also had a passion for tennis and played the clarinet. She was also very active on social media, constantly sharing memes, jokes, and photos. It was in social networks that Ashley met Jack Settle. Their acquaintance took place in 2015, when she was 12 years old and he was 15. It is known that Jack was born on January 9, 1999, and his mother Tracy Dalton was married to a man named Ricky. As for his father, who passed away in 2019, the relationship with him was reportedly strained. As for the rest of Jack's family members, he did not communicate with his brother Jordan, but he did communicate with his sister Nadia. Aside from his mother and sister, Jack didn't have many close people he interacted with, preferring to interact only with people through the internet and video games. According to some of Jack's acquaintances, he often got into trouble at school, although they remembered him as a fun, charming, and boisterous kid. They also talked about his dark side, which showed up when he was angry and spewed aggression at himself and others. It was a friend of Ashley's who interacted with Jack through social media that introduced the two young people, as for many other teenagers. It was natural for Ashley to connect with strangers through various platforms and form virtual friendships, whether they had common interests or were just attracted to each other. Jack and Ashley quickly became virtual friends. At the time, she did not have a smartphone and used the family computer to access social networks. So, friendship with the Englishman was never a secret for her relatives, according to Ashley's mother. During their long-distance friendship, Jack had several relationships with different girls, and Ashley also went through a typical teenage experience. Despite the periods when they stopped communicating, the connection between the young people never completely disappeared, and they continued to communicate over the years. As Ashley and Jack grew older, their relationship changed. They began communicating not only on social media, but also through video calls. As a result, their relationship became more intimate and romantic. Soon, Jack became a familiar face to Ashley's family members. If they passed by when the guys were talking, they usually greeted him as if he was actually in their living room. He also sent the girl gifts of teddy bears and purses on numerous occasions. Ashley's family and friends said she was forever comparing every boy she met to Jack because of the eight-hour time difference between Vernon and Essex, where Jack lived. The young men woke up too early and went to bed too late to be able to talk. In 2018, when Ashley was 15 years old, she began to show interest in seeing Jack in person. However, her family would not allow her to travel alone to another continent. Periodically, like any pair of young people, they quarreled. If those fights resulted in Ashley blocking Jack on her social media accounts, he would create new accounts or send her messages through his sister or acquaintances. This was disturbing and intrusive to the girl's loved ones, but she insisted that he was a compassionate and good-hearted man. In October 2018, Jack got Ashley's name tattooed on his arm. At that time, she was 16 years old and he was 19. The girl's parents thought such a display of affection was excessive, and they warned her to be careful and not even think of doing the same. Soon, during one of the fights, Jack stabbed a knife wound on his tattoo with Ashley's name. After that, the guy started showing jealous and violent behavior. He would get angry if he thought Ashley was dating guys, even though he himself continued to date other girls. But he insisted that Ashley was his favorite and said he only wanted her. One day, Ashley called a girlfriend who was at Jack's house and told her that he wouldn't let her leave. According to a friend who was present during this conversation, Ashley did not get upset and even reacted as if she was used to such situations. She simply asked Jack to stop acting crazy. Ashley didn't tell her parents about it, but she did tell her friends who insisted that she stop all contact with him. Despite the guy's many fights and problematic behavior, the couple always made up. Ashley was only 18 years old and had known Jack since her early teens. However, she didn't seem to realize the extent of his manipulation of her at a young age. Ashley began working at fast food restaurants and department stores, which allowed her to save money for entertainment. 
The first thing she bought was a tablet to be able to use social media more privately. Then the girl started saving money for a trip her senior year of high school. Ashley, who has always been a very spiritual and inquisitive person, had a moment of insight after reading the Book of Mormon and began following the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Ashley graduated from Sitton High School in 2020. She had planned to study law at Thompson Rivers University to become a lawyer, but she didn't immediately enroll there because classes were video conference due to the pandemic caused by COVID-19. She wanted to fully experience being part of the university community, so Ashley decided to take a sabbatical for a year before continuing her studies. During the first half of 2021, she continued to work and save money. In April of that year, she was baptized into Mormonism. It was then that Ashley, who had always been a bold and stubborn girl, decided to travel to the UK to meet Jack in person and spend his birthday with him. Her parents and friends weren't thrilled with the idea, but nothing could stop her since she had her own money and was of legal age. On November 12, 2021, Ashley left Canada for the UK on a six-month tourist visa. The girl left her homeland for the first time and was very happy about the event. Ashley and Jack met in person for the first time on November 13, 2021. On the same day, Ashley changed her profile picture to a picture with him. By then, Jack was already 22 years old and looked much older than Ashley. He was covered in tattoos, even on his face, and the contrast with the young, fun-loving 19-year-old was obvious. During her stay in London, Ashley stayed at Jack's house. The young man had been living alone in an annex in a public housing estate in Northwest Chelmsford since 2020. The neighborhood had a dubious reputation, but the couple had looked around the nicer parts of the city in the county of Essex. Jack seemed like the same man Ashley had met online. He was affectionate and caring, showering her with compliments and never turning down romantic selfies. But at the same time he was not constant and could be cruel. The young people were together every day. Ashley, staying on a tourist visa, could not work, and Jack was unemployed and received benefits. Sometimes he had the support of his mother Tracy, who lived nearby. Ashley tried to constantly post photos and comments from the trip online. Most of the pictures show the couple in an embrace, obviously having a good time and enjoying romantic moments. Ashley was constantly communicating with her family via video link and everything seemed to be going well. They even adopted a kitten they named Winston. However, as time went on, Jack began to withdraw into himself. He no longer wanted to go for walks and sightseeing, preferring to stay home, smoke illegal substances and play video games while in a foreign country. Ashley could do little on her own, even though she loved being outdoors. Her options were limited to what Jack wanted her to do. Before traveling to England, one of Ashley's church friends set her up with American missionaries who would be in Chelmsford at the same time as her. Ashley wanted to meet and befriend these young men who shared her religion, but Jack wouldn't let her attend church on Sundays. However, the girl kept in touch with them through text messages. To keep Jack from finding out by checking her phone, she deleted the correspondence. Her new church friends discovered almost immediately that Jack was controlling and possibly abusing her. Discussing her problems with them, Ashley admitted that she knew she deserved better, but she just wanted Jack to be happy. The abuse wasn't limited to controlling communication, Ashley with other people. About six weeks after the girl arrived, Jack texted his mother to tell her that he had beaten Ashley up because he found out she had blocked two UK numbers on her phone. He decided they belonged to other men a few years ago, which triggered a jealousy attack. Although Ashley continued to show photos of her seemingly perfect trip on her public social media accounts, she created a secret profile where she began documenting her bruises. Ashley didn't hide the abuse from her sister Haley, but threatened to cut off communication if she told her mother, as she didn't want her family to hate Jack. In late December 2021, Jack took an excessive amount of an anti-anxiety medication. Ashley called an ambulance, which rushed the guy to the hospital where he was treated for an overdose. The girl was then appointed as Jack's caregiver and took responsibility for the safe administration of his medication. Although Ashley didn't tell her mother or friends about it, Haley accidentally let the secret out. Apparently, her mother was worried and asked her daughter to come back, but Ashley insisted that Jack get better first. In early January 2022, a new incident occurred. Jack smashed a beer glass over the head of Ashley, a sobbing girl. She contacted her sister via video link while the guy made her clean up the broken shards. In the background, the girl could see Jack pacing back and forth, screaming and clenching his teeth. Haley begged her sister to come home, but it was to no avail. On the 9th of that month, Jack celebrated his 23rd birthday with his family as if nothing had happened. 
and Ashley soon after. Jack's mother and her husband organized a family trip to a small seaside town, figuring a change of scenery would help ease the tension. Everything looked so perfect in the photos that even Ashley's parents, who were unaware of the seriousness of what was going on, breathed a sigh of relief when they saw their daughter's calm and happiness. However, the seeming calm soon disappeared during an argument in late January. Jack hit Ashley again and threw a candle and a TV remote at her as she was on a video call with Haley, who was once again begging her sister to come home. Ashley had agreed at first, but soon changed her mind. She believed that somewhere inside that cruel man was the same charming guy she'd known for so many years. Ashley prayed that time, medicine, or her love would heal him. From his conversations with her mother, Jack seemed to realize the cycle he had driven Ashley into. He accused her of infidelity, beat her up, and then apologized. However, Jack seemed to feel guilty for his actions, but it wasn't enough to prevent the tragedy that eventually happened. On the morning of February 1, 2022, Jack was angry at Ashley again, accusing her of running away and dating other people behind his back. He even demanded that she show him her cell phone and check all of her social media accounts. Shortly before 8 a.m., neighbor Helen Bortenshaw heard Ashley screaming through the shared wall, and a few minutes later, the woman appeared at Jack's door. When the door opened, Helen saw a barefoot and crying Ashley with blood dripping from a cut on her palm. Ashley revealed that Jack had caught her looking at nude pictures of the woman and had become enraged. He verbally abused her, then punched and smashed her phone and threw her kitten at the wall. Despite her fears that Jack was trying to kill Ashley, she asked Helen not to call the police. Helen agreed, but begged Ashley to go with her to a doctor's appointment instead of returning to her partner's apartment. Ashley refused, so Helen decided to go and talk to Jack. He apologized for what had happened, remaining calm, and Haley left for her doctor's appointment at around 9 a.m. Lucy's neighbor brought Jack a package that had been mistakenly delivered to her address. He didn't want to answer the door at all, but Lucy didn't give it much thought as she knew he was an unfriendly and paranoid person. Around this time, Ashley called her family from Jack's cell phone. By this time, the girl's mother was already aware of what was going on with Jack because Haley couldn't take it anymore and confessed everything. Her parents immediately bought her a return ticket for February 3rd. When Ashley told Jack she was leaving, he agreed to accompany her to take the COVID-19 test required for the trip and also said he would drive her to the airport. Ashley's mother warned her daughter to go to the airport immediately if the boyfriend assaulted her again, and warned Jack that she would call the police if he hurt her daughter again. Ashley's conversation with the family went on for about three hours. When they finally disconnected, it was 11 o'clock in the morning in Chelmsford and 3 in the morning in Vernon. A few minutes later, Jack texted his mother to admit that he had once again brutally beaten Ashley, knocking her to the floor and possibly breaking her arm. This occurred between 11.22 a.m. and 12.38 a.m. Ashley sent several messages to family and friends from Jack's cell phone. Since it was nighttime, no one responded. She also texted her friends at the church in Chelmsford asking for help and pointing out the emergency. Unfortunately, these messages were not received until hours later when there was nothing more that could be done. Between 12.38 and 12.45 Jack attacked Ashley, squeezing her neck until she stopped breathing. He then went to the kitchen, took an 11-centimeter knife and stabbed the girl's chest and stomach about a hundred times, ending her life in this brutal way. Jack later changed his profile picture to an image of himself with Ashley, which he accompanied with the caption, Always Mine. He then recorded a video addressed to Hala in which he said he loved Ashley, that he was sorry but couldn't let her go, and that his head wasn't working properly. The video, which was never sent, showed the girl's body next to him. While all this was going on in England, Ashley's family woke up in Vernon and saw the huge number of messages Ashley had sent them. They called Jamie Ashworth, one of their Mormon friends in Chelmsford. Jamie and Tyler Borden, another church acquaintance, went to Jack's apartment. After knocking on the door, they got no answer, called the police and left. At the same time, Ashley's best friend in Vernon noticed that the girl was being active on her social media accounts. In desperation, she texted her. On the other end was Jack, posing as his dead girlfriend. He told his girlfriend that he sent those messages because he needed help to pass the COVID-19 test, but it was no longer necessary. Messages from Ashley's family and friends kept coming in, but Jack ignored them. They were all desperate to hear from her. Finally, Jack called his sister Nadia. When the girl answered, he confessed that he had killed Ashley, even showing his sister the body. This happened around 4.13 p.m. When the police entered the apartment in response to Jamie's call, even though it only took them 10 minutes to arrive on the scene, it was too late. Police arrested Jack on the spot. He was covered in blood. 
The guy told the officers that he had a psychotic episode and confessed to the crime. He was then sent to Chelmsford Prison. The trial was set for September 7, 2022 at Chelmsford Crown Court. A toxicology examination showed that Jack had only traces of light illicit substances and a small amount of anti-anxiety medication. According to the psychiatric examination, the defendant was fit to give evidence and stand trial. The evidence against Jack was overwhelming and included a videotape of him admitting to committing the crime. The guy immediately pleaded guilty, and the judge informed him that given his confession, there could only be one sentence, life imprisonment. On the day of the hearing, held at Chelmsford Crown Court under Judge Edward Murray, Prosecutor Simon Spence read out details of the criminal record Jack had acquired as a teenager. It was there that Ashley's parents first learned who their daughter's boyfriend really was. Jack has been in trouble with the law since 2014. He has been arrested multiple times for stalking a girl, for kidnapping, for unlawful confinement in a home, and for violent assault. He has also been granted a restraining order against his mother and his girlfriend several times. Ashley's parents were shocked to learn of the criminal record of the man who took their daughter's life. During the hearing, the prosecution and defense exchanged views on the letter Jack sent to Ashley's family from prison, in which he expressed remorse for what he had done. After the hearing, Judge Murray allowed the letter to be released to the media, citing the principle of open justice. In the letter, addressed to Ashley's entire family but especially her mother and sister Haley, Jack acknowledged that nothing could bring Ashley back to them or take away the pain they were experiencing. He regretted his act and acknowledged that his mental state played a large role in the tragedy. Jack also claimed that he had spoken openly about his mental health with Ashley. At the end of the trial, Jack Sapple was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 23 years. Friends, write in the comments what you think about this story, and also see other videos on the channel.